a lot of the people who have made it to the top, you know, they have a really good understanding of what makes them unique and what makes them special and why they should be hired or they should be promoted over the people. And I wanted to, um, you know, for, for, for young people and families to have a better understanding of those sorts of things. And, yeah. um, you know, just to uh, be confident um, in ourselves that what we have to offer as Pacific peoples is, um, you know, incredibly unique mm. and is incredibly valuable, um, even though it might uh, be, even though we might undervalue them or our employers might undervalue them, how can we talk about these things um, in a way that, um, so that they are recognised and rewarded. So, to be you have just uh, watched your second episode. Uh, that's why we're recording after it. Um, so, look, uh, uh, it's going to be weird because this lives on audio and TV, but it also lives in a podcast. So, I guess I should set it up a little bit. Uh, you um, you got your own TV show. I mean, that's cool. You know, not, not many people get to say that, and, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it's also at a time where, you know, it's not clear how humanity goes, right? We can't just catch up with each other in large numbers. So, you know, the internet and television have really found a soul in today's environment, right? This COVID Mm, environment. So uh, playing that part, bringing authentic conversations is, is, you know, really interesting because, yeah, anyway, we can get into all that. But Tupé, first, I'd like to welcome you. um, and, And I'd actually like to ask you, who are you? Because I come across your TV show and I'm part of the Audiana family as well, but I'm like everyone else. I've only seen the promos. I've only seen the episode, but when I did a quick Google on you, it does not just TV, you're into stuff. Would that be accurate? A person curious (laughs) about lots of different things? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. Well, well, first of all, um, I mean, Nami hinu kia koutou katoa, salo falava, nisan bolivinaka. Um, yeah, I mean, I think yeah, just to, to introduce a little bit about myself, I'm a mm. Samoan Fiji and New Zealander. And um, yeah, my mum um, moved here in the 60s when um, she was nine years old. Uh, she's from Afinga in Samoa. My dad is uh, from Fiji, born and raised in Fiji. He moved here in the 60s when he was 18. And um, his grandparents actually are from Faleolili in Samoa and they migrated to Fiji um, in the late 1800s. So, um, yeah, there's a real, um, you know, history of uh, being part of the Pacific diaspora in my family. Mm. And so, um, you know, my identity is something I've thought a lot about yes. uh, throughout my life. Mm. And, you know, just that question of, you know, who are you, where are you right, from? Right, right, you know, That, like, used to, you know, cause anxiety. Mm. Well, <laughs> I hope I we haven't like, triggered it. I hope <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm all good with it now. But um, mm. just to say that, you know, it's something that I thought about a lot. And mm. it's, you know, one of the reasons that has motivated me to, make this show and to tell Pacific stories because um, our history and our culture is so rich and it's so diverse. Um, And, you know, our, um, you know, we're not a homogenous people, um, you know, you know, across the Pacific, you know, there's so many different islands, so many different histories. And then even, um, you know, for those of us who identify, for example, as Samoan, um, it, there's a lot, um, you know, of different, rich, diverse stories behind that identity as well. So, um, you know, my, my parents had, had um, five kids and one of five. And, um, you know, we, we're really close knit family and um, all of my um, family worked um, well for 25 years they had uh, a second chance school or a school for second chance education Uh, and um, I'm the one who took a bit of a different path um, and uh, I studied law and uh, then then went on to to get my dream job which was uh, to be a diplomat um, and I did that for 13 years and I loved it. It was an amazing experience. Uh, my family has lived in Taiwan and in Fiji um, wow. when I was um, an international civil servant. Um, so, you know, I've, I've um, spent a lot of time in Asia. I've spent um, time in the Pacific as well. Um, and uh, currently I head a philanthropic organization. Um, which is focused on um, transformative change in the criminal justice system and in family law. 
And, um, you know, it's, you know, I feel an enormous privilege because of the sacrifices that my parents and my family made for me so that I could get a good education. Mm -hmm. And um, because of that, I feel really, you know, compelled to give back and to use the privilege that I have to, you know, help others. And, um, you know, so I have my professional roles, but I also have my side hustle, which is my absolute passion, <laughs> uh, which is making stories with, uh, together with my husband, Asera. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Paparazzi Productions. We made a web series, and now we're making Salanoa Tupe. We're raising uh, two young, independent, uh, beautiful young girls, and um, they've got their own passions, and one of their um, the things that they enjoy is helping us and seeing mum and dad, um, you know, make... Uh, web series and they've had a crack at making their own short <laughs> films as well. So awesome. there's a lot going on. <laughs> Look, and can I just thank you for keeping me afloat, right? I asked a pretty big question. Who are you? Because, because that is the question people want to ask, but if you don't kind of put it in the right context, it's like, well, shouldn't you have done your research? And yes, I should have, but I knew there's a, when I walked away from just having a quick Google, I'm like, wow, you guys are like multifaceted and how, and I mean, you and your husband, I had considered asking if both of you would join and maybe we can do that another time, but there's this creative spark. There's this real, um, uh, you know, c- community spark and these things have to merge together. It's something I think about often is, you know, we want the world to be logic, but there's so many little intricacies, you know, even mm. right down to belief. What do we believe in? It's arguably the reason I started this podcast, you know, like I guess it's part of a journey for me. When I hear you talk, it's making me question, wow, those, those, those motives sound um, very like when you say that out loud, has it felt like it's gone to plan? I mean, I just want to make sure because my journey, for example, has been like, wow, I was babied for way too long. I didn't have either of my cultures, Cook Island or you know European, saying or learning or teaching me anything. So I just kind of drifted through and emerged out as an adult thinking, hmm, what now? So this is what this is for me. I'm rapidly trying to catch up, right? And it's very intense and scary and uh, you know, beautiful at the same time because I get a, a window into all of these different, um, you know, I, I guess, universes. And you've highlighted that too with, with your journey. But, you know, when you say you kind of took the different path to law, I mean, was that okay? Were you, uh, was everyone else all right with you, uh, you know, flying your own way? Oh yeah, absolutely. I had um, I've always had the support of my family, so I've been able to take things for granted that my parents couldn't take for granted, and that mm. even my siblings couldn't take for granted. You know, even the fact that I could go straight from, um, you know, I had the choice of going straight from high school to university. That was not a choice that my siblings had. You know, they, um, you know, because there's quite a big gap between. Um, my younger brother and I and the three older siblings in the family. So um, when they finished up school, they had to go straight to work, um, you know, to help mum and dad put food on the table because they were starting a new business at the time. And, um, you know, the, you know, things because of the, you know, collective sacrifice of, of my family, I, you know, had the option of going to one of the best schools in Auckland. Um, I could even take an OE straight after high school and then go to university uh, because of, um, you know, all of that work that they put in. So because of that, I felt, um, I always felt a real responsibility because um, my way of contributing to the family was to do well at school. You know, that's, that, that, that was how I could pay them back. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so they've been really supportive of um, you know, me taking a different path and I'm, I'm so grateful to them for that. Mm. But, um, you know, just to touch on one of the other things you, you were talking about, about how there's like so much, you know, I think um, we, um, you know, as human beings have a tendency to want to categorize things because, you know, we want to make things nice and neat. And yeah. so, um, but I think the reality is that we are all multifaceted. Yeah. Um, and I think that, Um, one of the things that happens is that we tend to put ourselves in our own boxes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a very long time, I ignored that 
I had other parts to myself that mm. I was creative, that I, you know, that I like to sing, for example. So we sing, um, you know, the, the intro song um, on our show. That's my husband and I. Sing. Yeah, cool. yeah that, that single's coming out soon. But <laughs> it's, um, it's really interesting just, um, you know, coming to that realization that, you know, and like at the beginning, no one really, you know, told me that I could only wear you know, so many hats and I should just focus on one. That's just something I automatically did because that's kind of what we do in society. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I've got my dream job now. Now I'm a diplomat. That's what I'm going to do. Yep. And then later it was like, okay, I've got my career and I've got my kids. I'm a mother now. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's enough. Enough on my plate now. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was, um, yeah, it was probably about two years ago that I just came to this realization like, man, there was all these things that I wanted to do when I was young. And, you know, um, we've just been busy putting food on the table and paying the mortgage and stuff like that, which is, you know, of course, like what your, um, you know, where your headspace is in for a lot of your, you know, when you're setting yourself up and getting yourself established, that's where the focus is going to be is making sure your family's okay. And then, I don't know, it, I think it's just this thing that happens when you get older. You just start to revisit some of those, you know, natural yearnings you had when you were younger. And, yep. and so that's why we try new stuff. And you know what? It's really scary. It's, um, it's hard to, you know, put yourself out there. And I'm you know, sure you know um, what that's about. <laughs> but it feels like um, we're finally, you know, doing the things. I mean, we, we were given these talents for a reason. So why not yep. use them? Exactly. Exactly. And I think... What I'd like to explore when we come back from the break is sometimes I think we get trapped a little bit within, you know, not buzzwords, and this is not saying anything you've said, but it makes so much sense when someone says, you know, get out there, you've got the talent, go do it. Yet I sit there thinking, right, now what? It's the now what? What's the difference between the grind and getting there versus the fleeting moment where the idea might come and dissipate? You know, there is this little these micro moments and mm. I'm not sure how to capture them, whether it's calming yourself to capture it or, you know, exciting yourself. And I sometimes think it's like the little ember you're trying not to blow out. And sometimes other people are blowing out or it's raining. It's, it's, I just want to ask as many people as I can, how did they capture that flame for them? So maybe we frame that after the break around your show, Talanoa with Tupé and one question I want to ask you is like when that red light goes on and it was action, were you fight or flight? Were you in the moment? What was your technique? What was your thinking? Because when it comes across on TV, it's like we're calm, we're collected, but you know, I want to know what was happening on the inside. So stay with us, everybody back in just a second. Okay, back from uh, all those lovely ads. Note to everybody, buy something if you can to support Audiana TV and the co-papa here. Tupé, when you, I mean, run me through. When I looked online, I saw a little bit of social media around you know, the makeup and the cameras, and I think uh, you were getting ready for, for a big interview. Um, what was that like for you? Were you, you know... Is, is it fun making a TV show? Particularly, you know, for me, I'm in a garage and I run everything myself. But on that day, I looked when someone was capturing footage, there was a lot of things going on, set dressing, makeup. Are those fun moments for you? Was it fun, all of that stuff? Or were you there for business? Um, it was all just so much fun. I mean, I think mm. if I could just talk a little bit about the process of making the show. Um, mm. So... I mean, my family moved back from Fiji in March of this year, just right before lockdown. And um, it was around about that time that we heard about Oriana TV and this new uh, Pacific station. And um, Samson, so the general manager of Oriana TV, uh, got in contact with us about showing our web series on, on the station. And, um, you know, we got to talking and... Uh, told him about this show that we'd been wanting to make and uh, he loved the idea and commissioned the show and so we decided to work together um, in a co-production um, arrangement mm -hmm. to make it happen. And, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, you, you know what it's like seeing, um, you know, your idea come to, to life. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a really wonderful feeling but 
behind you know what everybody sees is an incredible amount of work that goes into it and um, the other thing is that you know we um, you know don't have any funding for this you know mm. we're pouring our own um, money our own um, time and, and resources into this because we absolutely love what we're doing and because you know when I was uh, growing up I, w- I would have loved to have seen uh, what Pacific people who were excelling in their fields like what went into that and mm. what went into their home environment and what did they study and what did they you know what got them through you know those tough moments and in particular I think um, now that I'm a professional and for a lot of us you know, in various pr- professions, um, we don't have a lot of uh, people that we can turn to within our own communities who are in those professions. And so, um, you know, what I'd like to see is, you know, people who have made the top of their field, like what um, are the lessons that we can extrapolate into, you know, different fields? Because um, I think, you know, coming up, in the spaces that I've been in, a lot of the competencies that are measured are, uh, you know, come from Balangi constructs. And so, uh, you know, when I'm going into, you know, you know, when I was in, uh, you know, various other jobs and I'm going into um, my performance review, um, I didn't really think about some things that come really naturally to me and to other Pacific people and see them as something that I could use as a selling point or tell them like why I'm doing such a great job mm-hmm. uh, because I just took those, you know, for granted and I thought, well, everybody can do that. I was even told, oh, everyone can build relationships. Everyone can um, do that. When actually, no, th- these are things that are real strengths for Pacific people and, um, you know, we don't even think to bring them up in a review or put them on our CV um, when they are actually, you know, the things that make us different, the things that make us special. And um, yeah, so that was, you know, part of my reason for wanting to do the show because uh, a lot of the people who have made it to the top, you know, they have a really good understanding of what makes them unique and what makes them special and why they should be hired or they should be promoted over the people. And I wanted to, um, you know, for, for, for young people and families to have a better understanding of those sorts of things and, yeah. um, you know, just to uh, be confident um, in ourselves that what we have to offer as Pacific peoples is, um, you know, incredibly unique mm. and is incredibly valuable, um, even though it might uh, be even though we might undervalue them or our employers might undervalue them, how can we talk about these things um, in a way that, um, so that they are recognized and rewarded? I love that. I love that. And I always think about it when this, these moments happen on the podcast and the show, like, like you got to say some stuff out loud, you know, if you don't say it out loud, it just exists in this other realm in the mind, you know, and, you know, even something as simple as you're, if you don't value it because it's every day and someone else doesn't know, you can only half blame them for not knowing something that they should have or shouldn't have, you know, like that's the tension. One of the things that comes to mind when you talk is I haven't for many years been able to put a a phrase to it, but I finally worked out that my kindness gets misinterpreted for weakness. Mm. And, And it took me a long time and I still haven't made a resolution with that because for me, I run the systems in my head. I'm like, well, I could be more pushy. You know, I could actually use the size I've got in a scary way instead of in a disarming way, you know, uh, because you're also in real time with yourself where you're just trying to make what you've got work. And it just is so interesting to, and I know life's actually quite simple. I don't sit here trying to make it all, you know, well, it's too much, but we've got to dig a little bit deeper. And I feel like, um, you know, I feel like what you're doing, particularly with, you know, you bring professionals in and then it's like, um, you know, the Torfinger episode, for example, I didn't see a lot of, you know, ha ha ha, you know, let's go sillier and sillier. And there was funny moments, but you can count on your hand the amount of clips from him, for example, of just, you know, right, let's lift the cover a bit, you know, so mm. there's some type of percentage there, which we haven't quite accounted for, but if all you think to be amazing is funny, 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 maybe that's enough. 
or maybe you know what what what's that hiding or um, servicing? Because you know, I guess it's a th- these are pretty big questions. But to make it a bit more wide, have you found any um, through lines or common themes that come up with the conversations you've had? Obviously, people are going to watch them, so they'll hear it from themselves. But from you as the host, has there been any kind of themes that have started to come through during your conversations on the show? Mm. Yeah, a lot of uh, really common themes and um, for me it was really interesting because uh, a lot of it was about, you know, what happened in families and uh, I guess the hard work and the sacrifices that went into providing opportunities for a lot of those who had excelled. Mm -hmm. Um, The feeling of, um, you know, service and wanting to give back um, that came through really strongly, but um, you know there was um, there was what people could do within their own families and their own homes, but then there was also what was happening in society at large and in the policy settings and the environment that allowed uh, people to do well um, with the hard work that they were. Um, emphasizing in their own homes there also had to be something happening at the systems level in order to help them succeed so um, a lot of people talked about the capitalization of family benefits which allowed them to uh, buy their first homes which in turn set that family on a path to um, intergenerational wealth Uh, so yeah I mean I thought it was just really interesting to see um, you know, the things that were happening in families, but also the things that were happening uh, in society that could help encourage um, and, um, you know, see these families um, succeed. Uh, to be, I don't know if you kind of have this feeling, but when I speak to a lot of people um, and at the, I guess at this stage, it's, you know, a few hundred, not for this podcast, but over the journey. Um, I start to see similarities, you know, um, particularly in people I th- didn't think I would. You know, I speak to people who are very um, faith-based and others who, let's say, have a more atheist type of view of things. And I'll, I'll be the first to say I'm kind of stuck in the middle somewhere where I really am someone in a in a like the the most loving battle ever of trying to make sense of what is it you know what is it that we're talking about when we say past present future and beyond you know why does it feel some days like we're we're just kind of animals rolling around with you know primal instincts and other days where these beams of light that can make TV shows and short films, you know, that, that will serve us in other realms. But it definitely, uh, I start to see similarities and I don't really know what to do with that information, but I kind of feel like that, um, yeah, that maybe part of our role is as kind of communicators, you know, as historically, I guess, you know, Pacifica and Māori have been oral type of um, communicators, but do you kind of get a buzz to know that you get to archive these chats now, that they live forever, presumably? Mm. Yeah, I mean, at the time that we were making them, I mean, I was just thinking about them being viewed by families in the here Mm. and now. But yeah, that is that is pretty special to think that we're capturing a moment in time. Mm. It's um, interesting to see, you know, what the future thinks, right? Because I don't know. I think it's interesting with this current world where it's weird because it's a bit like mindfulness. We keep getting brought back to now. And when you're meditating and stuff, that's encouraged. But it's something about when it's happening on a worldwide scale today, today, today that it's not so sure what the future will bring. Um, There's a little bit of uneasiness, you know, and and that's if things are going all right, let's say at home and with the job and stuff, but you add a couple of layers on top. Uh, When we come back, maybe maybe we'll just keep on that conversation. I, I guess I'd like to talk a little bit about, if it's okay, like some things you do to kind of 
keep yourself, you know, going on the darker days. And uh, we don't have to get into too much detail, but we're all made up of so many different things. And there might be one thing you do that gives someone a tool, something that we take for granted, you know, just like saying kindness is not a weakness. That helps people in their minds. And it might be something like getting some sunlight or a phrase or something like that. So if that's cool with you, we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll keep going. Before the break, we talked a little bit about what well, a lot, you know, that's how my podcasts roll. I guess I'll simplify it, you know, to keep it, to keep things going, to keep momentum going forward. Are you someone who structures out um, wellness, if you like? What are some of the things that you do just to, you know, keep the warrant of fitness up to date? Yeah, I think. Um that is something that we all really need need to think about in these times because mm. um, there are a lot of different stresses that come with, um, you know, living in the time of a global pandemic. Um, and, I mean, just, you know, in our everyday lives, it, it is something that we do need to think about. I think the first thing that I'd mention is that um, I'm a person of faith and, um, you know, that's, you know, the thing that really keeps me grounded. Um, and that's the thing that I rely on. And, you know, one of the really uh, interesting things for me in this whole process was just um, that, I mean, we've always believed that God puts the right people in your life for a reason. And, um, yeah, I just really felt that very strongly throughout this whole project um, that, I mean, it's it's really hard to put a TV show together. Um but, um, I mean, especially when you have no funding or, or anything like that, <laughs> um, there's a lot of commitment um, and work that goes into it. But I just really felt that um, that the right people were put into our lives and um, that everything, you know, came together really beautifully. Also, one of the things um, I was going to mention, but then I started going off on a different tangent, <laughs> my previous question. But no, that's all right. The way that we filmed it was that we hired the studio uh, for two weekends and the whole series was shot in two and a half days. Right. So, um, you know, even just the fact that we were able to get the people, um, you know, to agree to come and be interviewed and, you know, fit them all into two and a half days. I mean, mm. that was, you know, something really special. And I think that it wasn't until we started filming that we realised why everything had come together so um, beautifully as you know almost all of our guests talked about the importance of faith in their lives mm -hmm. and I think that that was a message that really needed to get out there at this time and um, yeah I mean I think for me I mean that the flip side of you know being able to to put together you know content that we you know just so um proud of is that you open yourself up to criticism when you put things out there yep 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 um, yeah yeah you do <laughs> yeah but that is that that comes with the territory mm. and um you know really um you know as as an artist i mean I, I actually don't think criticism is the worst thing i think probably the worst thing is you know for you to put something out there and there's no reaction mm. i mean as an artist um anything any reaction you get if it's you know good or bad you made somebody feel something and um we did actually you know with the series want to be challenging you know perceptions we did want to show people a different side of you know some some of their you know beloved heroes you know something they hadn't seen you know or heard before and a lot of people that we um interviewed said they wanted to talk about something different and to um, to help, I guess, spark conversations within different families. Mm. And, um, you know, but it is, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a human and, you know, sometimes, um, you know, it's really tough to get personal criticism, especially if it's not delivered, yeah. um, you know, in a way that um, is helpful. Mm. But you mm. just have to try and, um, 
you know, take the learnings that you can. And um, I guess what, one thing that I've learned over many years, like in my professional life, um, as well as, you know, some of the other things that we've done, is that any feedback you receive is not about you. Mm. Um, well, it, it actually, it tells you more about the person who's giving the feedback than it does about you. It's probably a better way to put it. Okay, can we just hold on that point for a second? Because many people, including me, will be like, wait, I'm listening really closely now because I have never heard anyone saying that to me. I've heard lots of things like you've got to be open to feedback or, you know, like we've got your best well-being in mind, you know, when we outsell our love or our, our, our whatever's to others. So you're saying that you, yeah, explain that again, please. So any feedback that you receive is more a reflection of the person giving the feedback than it right. is about you. Right. So it is useful because it tells you, that if you want to reach that person or that group of people, then that's what they, you know, this is the way that they like it to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example from my professional life. So um, I'm pretty confident that I'm a very good writer. <laughs> I graduated, um, you know, from law school with honours. Um, but every, um, you know, throughout the development of my career, I've always had, you know, superiors who would look at my work. And every time I changed a manager, I had to learn a new style of writing. So it's not that, um, you know, I mean, I would learn um, um, how one particular manager liked things to be written. I'd learn that way and then I'd change the manager and then I'd have to learn a completely new style because um, everyone, you know, everyone sees things differently. Everyone has their preferred style and that's the way you've got to look at it with your um, audiences as well. It's useful to know what some audiences are thinking, but, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to change your way of delivering. Um, it's just a reflection of what they prefer or like to hear. It's really interesting. That's really interesting. I kind of had just thought the goal was to find out who I should be and be that. But I guess what you're saying is it's a, it's a slightly, it's a moving ship like life is a, you know, we grow up, we get a bit older, we, we are always changing, but it doesn't feel like that if you're talking about you. It's just me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm. Not, I mean, I'm. I'm not saying that you need to, um, you know, adapt yourself in any way. Um, I think it's it's more um, just a way of contextualizing any feedback that you receive, um, and and so that you can make a decision whether you know that that's your audience and you want to, um, you know, whether you actually want to be changing hearts and minds in that space. Um, or whether, you know, you're just happy doing you and if people like it, they like it and if people don't, they don't. And um, I think, you know, where I'm at is, um, you know, I'm pretty much um, in the space where um, I just want to be happy with the content that I put out and proud of it regardless of, the, um, of how it lands um, and also just really want to focus on my purpose, which is to diversify the narrative around Pacific peoples and to show that we are not all the same. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I, I might rip that off as my purpose too. <laughs> I think I've unconsciously been doing it right, but in a weird way, I guess I just try and um, yeah. Like I sometimes think about when it gets a bit too much in terms of, wow, what's, what's, what's the whole deal here? I think, there is clues in things like when you say diversity, if you look at an immune system, it has to be different from every different possible way so that it's, so it has an answer for everything. And that's how I kind of think about us, you know, we are, we have to be different. So when I think what's my role, well, maybe it is to be just someone who, you know, weaves in and out of different streams and, and, you know, sometimes it takes the pressure off me personally, but, there is definitely like, whew, that's a bit of a risk if you don't have a strategic vision of where you want to be. You're floating around in the clouds a bit. But age has got my back, I think. I just turned 40 and I said two things to my wife when we had a little bit of cake. I said, yeah, I think I'm done with just being kind for kind's sake. I think now it's okay to make a, not enemies, but to say no. You know, I have a, a real 
need to please. And I, I, you know, I don't know where that comes from. Maybe it's a bit of a rude Palangi dad and a really over kind Cook Island mum. I just didn't, I'm both of them combined in this weird yin and yang. So yeah, it's a, it's an interesting thing, but look at me making it about me. We'll bring it back to you. Uh, we'll go to one more break and Tupa, I'd like to come back and I'd like to talk about two things. One, the balance of tradition versus moving forward in time, right? We are on a spectrum here, not a spectrum, but an ever evolving timeline, if you like. And, you know, if we think about it under the navigation um, realm, you were no good to most people if you couldn't move forward. You know, the goal was to find new things, to, to push out there, but to be smart enough to be able to come home when you need to. And sometimes I'm, because the uncharted waters, you know, hypothetically in our world are a little bit unclear, it's not always so clear what to aim towards. And so I feel like sometimes we just look at the past, you know, and say, at least I know that. So just interested to see how you, um, maybe things like business and culture and family and, you know, all these other things. And also, um, maybe just daring to dream a bit about what the, what the future holds. You know, we're very uh, logical in today's world. And if you say something outside of what anyone says in, in a level of authority, you're a conspiracy theorist. And I'm not saying let's go down the rabbit hole, but when we make short films and we write, we are enacting something within. And I like that that could hopefully inspire or I call it dare to dream. So, yeah, let's take a little break and we'll come back and jump into that. Okay, where do we start? I really... Um, <laughs> I can't well, remember your three questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, let's start on the dream part. What do you dream about? I mean, you know, I, and I ask that because you've got this very kind of logical, you know... Um, Logical may be the wrong word, but the career, and then you've got the creative, the idea, and those two must interweave. So where, where do you go forward if you look forward? Do you dream forward? What pictures do you see? Wow, what a great question. Um, I just made it up. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean – you know, I think a lot of what I'm doing is really motivated by having two girls and, mm -hmm. you know, being a mum and just wanting to, um, I guess, save them a lot of time in, in terms of figuring out what it took me almost 40 years to figure out. And in, to a certain extent, I, I already, you know, I feel like me, like living my wildest dreams, um, and, you know, putting myself out there and doing all of these really scary things for me, um, I think that that really has um, helped them to take some shortcuts. You know, it took me almost 40 years to think that, you know, to realise that what I had to say was important, you know, important enough to make a web series about it or to, you know, to make a show. And, you know, my, my girls are 10 and 13 and they've already, you know, done their own short films. I mean, you know, filmed, um, you know, on their phones and, you know, with mum and dad doing the acting and stuff. But, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I'm really happy that, you know, I've showed them by my example that no, no dream is, is too big and that they have something important to say. And I think, um, yeah, I, I would just like that for, you know, all of our young Pacifica growing up right now to learn the lessons that most of us, you know, have taken a lifetime to learn and just to be, you know, really confident with what they have and um, to know that, you know, all of these, you know, characteristics um, you know, the ethos of service, you know, the humility, the respect, uh, the kindness, you know, we can harness all of those things and, you know, use them in the workplace 
and that we serve no matter where we are, you know, no matter whether it's, um, you know, at the grassroots level or if it's in a boardroom, you know, we are all, you know, we're all part of the Pacific community, you know, whether, you know, we speak the language, whether, you know, we look like we're Pacific, how, you know, no matter how we speak or how we act, if we can, um, you know, fuck a papa back to that heritage, then we are Pacific. Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess my, my dream is that we can, you know, recognize the diversity um, within our own people, celebrate it, include it, because as you say, we do need all of those, um, you know, different characteristics. Be inclusive, um, recognize our differences, but also um, work together on the things that we can. Mm, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, you know, I'm re- sometimes I forget that I got to ask questions because I'm listening and I'm like, man, that's it. That's it. And and again, I kind of sit in the spot of, you know it's all good when you hear it and it's just trying to like, it's just trying to like say, I've got to get one of those things. I've got to start that path for one of those things tomorrow, you know, because look, I can tell you that, um, you know, I've got three little kids. Well, two are quite big now, 14 and 12, but this is the journey with those two little dudes. It's like, wow, they're little growing, growing men. And, Mm -hmm. Um, this is the version you get to meet, but with them, I'm trying to find the new version of dad, you know, and we got a little two year old and um, I know what to do with her, you know, we're all good, you know, so the, the rules are, for, I can come get you at night. I hug you, I change the nappies. It's all fair. But with the boys, they require a bit more. And one of the things I'm trying to be is a bit more patient, you know, because you know, you mentioned side hustle and grind and drive and the gift of dreaming, which it sounds like we both have, but man, it comes at a cost, you know, that Mm. sometimes everyone else gets the best version of us. And I'm grappling with it hard, trying to realize that, you know, maybe, maybe the fact that I'm aware of it is one thing and um, consistently trying to maybe capture the, the grumpy dad moment, you know, and, and bring more of the happy, cheerful will so yeah look it's it's um you definitely spark in a few things in my mind of just trying to just trying to make it all make sense and that's all this yeah. these conversations are for me it's you know i'll be it's funny to think about how people might listen to it one day you know where i'm sure it will be still relevant you know throughout mm-hmm. history it's not like we are the only ones to have ever gone through dramas you know but it definitely when you're in the real time, you're just trying to make sense. Eh? And it's yeah, a, it's an definitely. Mm. You know, becoming a parent just gave me so much more compassion and a different level of understanding for my own parents. I think a lot of us go through that, right? Like, um, you know, just realizing that, um, you know, they had a lot of things going on in their own minds, right? And a lot of things to unpack and, um, it's it's definitely um, yeah. I mean, it's something that uh, I think all of us are on this journey because you don't get a manual when you you know have kids, and um, yeah, it's it's something. I mean, I kind of view parenting as kind of an experiment because you might know what you know where you want to end up with them, but um, especially if you're trying to do something different to what your parents did, you actually you know you don't know, you know, how changing your parenting style is going to, to impact on your kids. Yeah. Um, so I guess, I mean, one of the things that we have tried to do with our daughters is um, encourage them from an early age to speak up and to talk their mind. Um, and um, I mean, that's been really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because you know now we've got uh, you know two very independent daughters, um, and um, you know, but we just you know hope that that's going to mean that they're going to be able to push back against um, you know like, you know push back in the the workplace and and anywhere where they might um, you know otherwise um, have been challenged and yeah we'll see um, I think. Um, Judging from the results so far, I think they're going to have no problem with that. Um, 
but the other thing that um, you know we try to do and um, is that because we you know because I you know work four days in my day job and three days on the side hustle um, you know and you know there are varying amounts of stress we try to just let them in Wait, and, four um, days and three days that's yeah. already over a week it's seven days <laughs> oh yeah yeah no, wait, what was I thinking about <laughs> Obviously not maths. Okay, yeah. Sorry, in my mind, I was like, wait, okay, yeah, carry on, carry on. I was like, wow, you work so hard, you must do mornings and nights. Okay, carry on, carry on. <laughs> um, no, it's just to kind of um, let them in on our thought processes mm. so that if I am tired, if I am tired, um, you know, that um, – you know, I, I give them, instead of being like, go away, now, mummy's tired, <laughs> I might try and unpack for them a little bit of what's going on in my life. And then, you know, um, you know, I just need, you know, half an hour to myself and then, you mm-hmm. know, and then we'll have, you know, we'll do this, this thing um, and I'll be in a better headspace then kind of thing. And, you know, um, you know we're, we're just, you know, we're still learning on our parenting journey, but. I don't know, I kind of feel like just um, giving them as much information as possible. Yeah, well, um, you know, we'll, we'll be good for them just to kind of, yeah. I, I guess it's basically just keeping the communication lines open. So, and, you know, sometimes I think to myself, the, the only deal I made was to love you. <laughs> and, and, and I'll use it as the rubric or the measurement to, to make everything else make sense. And I hope, you know, you think about long games, eh? And, and that's the difference, I guess, with, uh, if I think about my parents' parenting style, I guess, you know, it was very, a little bit hands-off. And some ways we celebrate it, you know, the kids were out running around and, you know, someone whistled and you came home. But today it's, we're all a bit more hands-on. And I can imagine that, um, you know, what we also have is a scenario where, you all probably watched the show, your show on TV tonight. And I mean, did you get a chance to kind of glance around at people watching you do your thing? Well, you know, or were you watching you do your thing? Oh, yeah. And we, we sit down together as a family and, and talk mm. about it. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, it's, this is a, um, you know, a real family affair. So everyone was involved in some way. I had my youngest helping me with wardrobe and my husband directed and um, my oldest daughter was taking behind the scenes footage. So, so they're, they're all, I mean, that's another thing too, is that um, uh, that's kind of a way of us building in our family time is that we're working on, on projects um, that we love together. Um, yeah. But I mean, just to, to come back to one other thing you said about, you know, loving your kids. I mean, if, if that's all you do, then that's enough, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. And I think, um, you know, we have to be kind to ourselves, mm. you know, as, as parents as well, because, you know, the, um, and, and take, you know, time out for ourselves because uh, the calmer we are, you know, that the better it's going to be for the kids. And um, yeah, I mean, something I, um, was thinking about recently too was the um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the five to one ratio, um, but basically it was a um, a very inspirational manager that I had um, told me about this. Um, it's basically like in the in the work context, and it also works in, in the family context as well. Um, for every negative interaction, uh, you need to have five positive interactions to to turn it around. And there's you know debates about the numbers, but basically it's keep your ratio high. Um, so so yeah, I mean that's that's um you know, um, I mean I think you know I've, you know I grew up in a family where the the, the ratio the love ratio was very high, and you yeah. know try to mm-hmm. you know have that environment here at home as well but the place that I've really noticed at work you know working or not working is in the work is you know in the professional environment Mm -hmm. um sometimes uh, you can have um you know managers who um you know quite uh I guess demand a lot of of the people they work with um but they are you know but they've got a very high ratio of being supportive and warm and, and encouraging as well. So people take those, um, 
moments where their boss is demanding something, um, you know, being very demanding, they take that, you know, pretty well. Um, and in other environments where the ratio is is not so high, even that though that person might actually be, you know, underneath the surface, quite a kind person. But if the ratio of um, pos- positive interactions to negative interactions is not high, then um, you're not going to have a very um, productive work culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there'll be a lot of people going, ah, because that is the feeling. What's wrong? Why, why am I getting this feeling? They're actually nice people. But I guess it's a little bit, how I've thought about, you know, managers that I've really liked is firm but fair, probably like parenting, you know, where it's like, um, okay, I get it, but you want to work hard. Something like a good captain in sport or something, eh? you know, where you, you know they will do it. Maybe that's the thing, yeah. Yeah, look, um, we've probably packed everyone's minds full of good stuff, and <laughs> I like that. I like that we can sit here um, on TV and in podcast audio form and and just talk you know i think this serves a more important part than we think i think uh you know if you look at it what's happening is two people coming together and floating the boat and touching base and being realized that we're in the time of technology and recording and all these things but we're still trying our best you know and i think the signal is i guess one of the things that i try and imagine is um you know, there's the white line in the middle of the road, but it's an imaginary story. You, but we all buy in, and it happens flawlessly for mo- you know, let's say on average, most times it works, and it's it's kind of like, but you know that if they just stop painting the line, it I don't know how fast it would turn into chaos. So that's why I think it's more important that there's strangers or peripheral people coming together and just talking because I don't like the alternative, which is, you know, we'll just hunker down into bubbles. You know, I'm not a fan of bubbles. (laughs) I mean, I like them if they're bubbles, but not how we talk about them. You know, like we we should call them domes because that's what we're saying. A dome, you know, a bubble is something different. You float around together, but a dome is you are you in your dome and I'm in mine. And um, I definitely think, you know, We've shown that tonight. Anyway, that's too far. It's too late. Too bad. Where can people follow you if they want to follow your story? Obviously, they're going to, they're on audio and TV, so they're going to watch your show. But if they want to learn about your world outside of the talk show, where's the best place to follow? Uh, Paparazzi Production. So we have a um, Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. All right got the whole professional <laughs> we're doing it <laughs> everyone watching us is like wow you guys are onto it and we are <laughs> but you know we're still on the on the real grind can i thank you for joining me tonight to chat and to just go on a bit of a journey and look i look forward to catching up with you and meeting your family and hopefully you could meet mine and just trying to keep this level of we'll share the real stuff you know let's make the real stuff good enough to share instead of what 99% of our colleagues will be doing in other forms of media which is reading off a script like that's too much and we forgot that they've got a team in their ear telling them what to say when that red light goes for us it's us you know and it might be a little bit of this version of me which can't add up the maths but most of the time we get it right so Tupi thank you so much for joining me Thank you so much for the opportunity, Will. I look forward to meeting your family.